Yeah, thank you very much and welcome to my presentation about the innovation framework for sustainable product and venture building. So first, talking about the relevance of this topic. So in 2021, Germany only produced over 670 million tons of CO2. And this is, it is expected that digitalization or digital solutions are able to reduce them by 20%. And so, who am I or who are we? We are Wadix. We are a company builder focusing on developing sustainable digital solutions, solutions and trying to get like this leverage on helping to overcome those climate issues in the long run. And how are we doing this actually? So, we have a pretty simple step and um, process. First, you have to find the idea. Then second, we have to validate the idea. And third, we have to build the idea, actually. So, and today I'm going to talk to you about each of those three steps. Let's start with actually finding the idea. Um, so for us, um, it, is, it is important that the idea has some kind of sustainable component in it. You might ask, what does sustainability mean in this context? So it really depends on the business model. So it could be the pretty simple equivalence of CO2 saves to the um, competition or maybe mapping it to the SDGs to have an alignment there. So it really depends from case to case. So there um, we have those two areas, um, meaning that when we get approached by a company, our customers are often Mittelstand companies from Germany. So they either want to transform one of their existing products sustainable, let's say a company wants to turn their production circular, or they want to explore new ideas in new spaces. Um, for example, a company approached us, wanted to find ideas in the sustainable construction space. So what we do there, we kind of look at opportunity areas to see where there might be a match for the existing business model for our customer. Here are some examples of four opportunity areas we're looking in. We're looking at so um, rental and sharing, maybe tracking and offsetting, supply chain transparency, and recycling and refurbishment. I don't think that I have to explain what each of those categories means, but I'll illustrate it how we actually do it with an example. So one of our customers was Nextmart. Nextmart is a B2B software as a service provider. Um, they're focusing on OEMs that operate in the construction space, um, like, for example, Bosch that produces those drilling machines um, or Hilti. And they provide an ERP software that integrates um, over the whole value chain until the end customer meaning that they have this B2B2B or B2B2C kind of business model. And also, as said, they have um, bis um, products um, integrated over the whole value chain. For example, this EDI Connect, which helps to connect the EDI of the OEM with the one of the retailer, the ERP Connect, which uh, provides the product availability on the website of the retailer, you name it, so they have a bunch of products. But important here is that they were super close to the OEMs and realized that there is a huge potential because of the batteries of the drilling machines. Because often when they're used, they get thrown away or left behind or stored in the storage room for forever and nothing happens. And this was also pre-election time, so they were also expecting this bear bog effect, um, kind of thinking that after the election everything will turn green and recycling has to, be, uh, has to be forced on every company. So they were approaching us to find an idea in this recycling circular kind of sphere. So what we 
did there, we started by mapping the life cycle of a product, um, starting by design engineering, sourcing, manufacturing, sales, usage, and end of life. And then we had a look on what different business models exist in each of those steps, or what kind of sustainable business models exist there. So for example, in sales, there are rental platforms, refurbing economy, end of life, you have giveaway platform and recycling as well. And so then after that, we went a step further and had a look on what, exact, exact, um, what companies already exist in those spaces. Um, for example, in rental platforms, there's Grover, you might know, um, this B2C uh, renting platform. Um, in giveaway platforms, there's Too Good To Go um, that operates there. So having this kind of knowledge, um, we then organized an innovation workshop one of those classic design thinking ideation workshops and were then able to find ideas in, or it was like a total of seven ideas, I think, in exactly those spaces. And you have to imagine that this idea finding process, the output or outcome of this one, is like a long list of ideas, of pretty high level ideas, between five and ten ideas, which have to be validated in the next step. So let's have a look on how we validate the actual business idea. So the usual framework consists of analyzing the desirability um, to see if the customer actually likes the product, where we would do customer interviews. Um, second, the viability where we check from a financial perspective if it makes sense. It's like classical business case modeling. And third, the feasibility um, to see if it is even possible to build the idea, mostly from an engineering kind of perspective. And here, obviously, we also check the sustainability. Here, metaphorically, uh, is shown as a fourth circle. So let's have a look on how we're actually doing this. We made it as a three steps process. Um, first, it is important to check on how much the weighting of the sustainability as a criteria is actually. As I know some of you might think, hey, it might be the most important one in the business model, but as already said, some of our customers are German Mittelstand companies, so they're already happy when the business model is a little bit more sustainable than their previous um, offering they had. Second, then the actual evaluation. And here, as already mentioned as well, it totally depends on the business model what we're doing. So it could be measuring the CO2 equivalence to the previous version, um, looking for the alignment with the SDGs, um, generally, yeah, you name it, operating into those opportunity areas. So it really depends to the case to case specifics. And third, then the challenging where we all come together in our um, team and have this kind of sparring rounds where we challenge the business model. Sometimes we also talk, take external experts with us to actually look that we really have a sustainable impact and not fall into this green wash, green washing mosh pit. So example how we did it. So our parent company, Wiesmann, approached us during um, COVID times. So they wanted to um, help the, their employees to be active and this with a sustainable benefit, kind of. So they had the idea about the sport app where they would provide um, planting a tree for each kilometer. And our task was then to, um, um, to validate if it makes sense to, the, uh, to build the idea. And spoiler, um, the outcome of this idea was this classical running app um, connected with some smart devices um, where you would run, um, the running would be tracked, where you could have team challenges, where then um, trees would be planted. 
and overall it was a huge success. So we had a really high participant rate, so there were 6,700 participants. I don't know if it's probably like a third of the employees of Wisman. There were like over 800,000 trees planted, and also it was lightly shared on all social media platforms, and there was even like this Garmin Health finalist, most innovative solution in engagement kind of thing <laughs> award. Yeah, um, so let's have a look on why this idea was validated in the first place. So first, this component of sustainability as an incentive. So um, Wiesmann, I don't know if you know the company, so they're um, providing um, they're helping, uh, they're providing energy efficient heating, so they're building heat pumps, for example. So they're already operating into this, in this sustainability sphere. So it was kind of a value fit to also um, help their, to also provide this incentive to their customers, uh, to their employees. Um, second, the focus was then set on local impact. So I already mentioned that Wisman approached us first with the idea to just plant trees and when a big company talks about something where they would want to plant trees, it's kind of a red flag going on or a red light. And so what we did there, we put the focus on local impact, um, meaning um, trees were planted, I think, around their Headquarter where they would have like actual influence and the employees would actually see what impact they had. And I think like nowadays they even bought some land in Finland where they're um, doing the tree planting themselves. So so it's not like some kind of project somewhere in the middle of nowhere where you would not have any influence. And third, also important, the social aspect. This team challenges. This I won't say social pressure that they could. Um, in a gamified way, challenge each other, um, which helped a lot to engage the employees and therefore it became an overall success. It even started to become a white label version. So or is, it's um, in the making or it's becoming a white label version. And one of those big tech players apparently already is using it. And so if the idea is validated, then probably one of the most important parts is that you actually have to build the idea. And here, many people are thinking that the idea per se has to be sustainable and then it's already a sustainable business. But um, therefore, I want to talk to you about the reason on why, what impact we can have in product building. So, First, there are more and more consumers using the internet. So, as we all know, every job nowadays became digital. In every profession, you have to use the internet. And also in emerging economies, you have more and more people with access to the internet. Second, um, I don't know if you remember back in the days, uh, they're not that old, but like 2025, uh, 2005, 2010, like the websites back, in th back then, they were like pretty simple with HTML, CSS, and so the average um, size of a website was about 500 kilobytes. And nowadays, if you look at the website, like for every small product, you have this interactive website with three auto-playing videos and everything in it, and therefore um, the average website size is about 2.3 megabytes. For example, Amazon is five megabytes. So you have like two factors. You have more people using the internet, plus you have um, more energy used per internet usage. Meaning overall you have more energy that is used and therefore the internet traffic has tripled since 2015. And it is expected for the energy usage related to the um, to digital solutions to become like one fifth of the overall energy consumption worldwide. So, what does this have to do with product building? So, 
um, the internet usage depends on mainly four factors. Um, first, the devices we used, the networks, uh, capabilities, the data centers, and the manufacturing. In digital product building, we can influence three of those um, three of those factors, which account for about 84% of the whole energy usage. So therefore, you could have a real influence, meaning that you can influence the, the resources that are needed plus the hosting. You can um, in, um, influence the performance of the tool and you can influence the device backward capabilities, meaning that not every product has to be available only for the newest version of iOS starting from iPhone 12 Plus that the users are forced to buy a new device from time to time. And you can generally influence the amount of data that are produced, saved and transferred. So what you actually can do there, um, so in digital product building, uh, simplified, you have on the one side, you have the um, cloud and um, hardware data, depending on how you're hosting, and on the other side, you have the software part. So what you can do on the cloud side, first, um, you have to choose the right tooling for the job. So as already mentioned, there is not always this fancy framework necessary, like sometimes the HTML and CSS is enough. Also, um, it is important to use auto-scaling, like if you're just starting your startup, there's no need for cloud capabilities to host one million people, so it's better to, to update it the more you grow. And also important to delete unnecessary data, for example, in backups, um, that there's like no need to do store the backups from five years ago. Regarding hosting, also important to host in low carbon regions. It doesn't matter how green the actual hardware is when it is in a place where the overall energy mix is um, fossil fuel based, um, it's still not sustainable and also to have the hosting as possible to the, um, to the close to the customers or consumers. Um, in the software part, you can actually have influence by choosing the right programming language. So per se, um, the interpreting languages like Python are less efficient than, for example, C-sharp or C++. And also to have the software always updated to clean the caching frequently or don't clean it that frequently as much as needed, um, to optimize the code, optimize the assets, and always measure um, the impact you have or look where there could be improvements. And one part of product development is the technical part. On the other side, you have also the business part where you could have actually impact on the sustainability or, or have, uh, or which is also impacted by the sustainability. So first you have the marketing aspects. Um, here, for example, obviously, if not necessary, you shouldn't do like print media, but also in targeting when targeting of digital ads, when your target customer is in Berlin only, there is no need to make like a German white targeting, targeting every possible kind of person. Second, the pricing. Um, there it depends, there you have two possibilities to either have like a premium pricing model um, since you have this sustainability component in your business model um, and therefore the customers might be willing to pay more or you could also use the competitive pricing um, meaning that you're be, uh, that the customer will prefer you compared to the um, other model. Sorry. And also communication, as we all know, sustainability is a sensitive topic, so it's important to have this fact-based, consistent communication to not fall in this green washing pit. So let's look at our last example again. So our parent company, Wisman, um, this is their sustainable strategy, um, LEAP, 
lead by example, empower people to act, advocate to foster a movement, and partner to scale up. So they came to us um, with the proposal to find an idea in exactly the empower and the partner space. So we started there with this idea finding, ideation part, and what then um, happened after this, we were founded our newest venture, Climany. So Climany focuses on customer, uh, consumer education in teaching them on how to become more sustainable or live in a more sustainable way. And the ones that are not inevitable or, or the, the reductions that are not inve inevitable can be offset um, over the application. Furthermore, they provide like a partner network um, where other companies operating in the sustainable space can put their, their offering where the consumers can get to the information and therefore you have kind of like this match where on the one hand you have the businesses providing their information, on the other hand you have consumers that can therefore with this information live a more sustainable lifestyle. And so what actually happened there in product building, so every product um, after this build process um, we have this checklist with about, I don't know, at the moment, it's like 200 questions. We check each of them to see how sustainable our product is. These are some random example questions that we check in each, um, each release. So, um, what improvements we did over the roadmap, um, for example, we used vectors instead of pixels that are easier um, to load. Second, there were no videos used. Um, and third, um, as an alternative for GIFs, we used Lottie files. Also, an intelligent caching was used where on the user side, the, not for every loading of the new page, there has to be new data transferred. And also the design is optimized, and also on the business part, the focus was made on reduction rather than just offsetting. And also it is aligned with the off Oxford offsetting principles. So coming back to our process, um, talk to you about first finding the idea, and then second validating the idea, and third building the idea. So this is obviously the simplified process. So um, our real process in quotes, um, here in the first and the second part in the research print and the idea validation, we're applying this kind of um, design thinking framework. You might know this double diamond um, about idea finding and validation. And the product builder, um, we're operating after this um, build, measure, learn principle, the classical lean startup. And this was already my presentation. Um, thank you very much. And I'm open for your questions. Thank you so much. Um, questions, comments, um, ideas, anything burning? This might be a little controversial, but why should we build something for the sixth time that already exists in the case of uh, Climany, where if you look in any app store, you basically see five offerings that do education on sustainability and also help you to compensate anything. I think it's just like, if we build the same thing three times, it's just a waste of resources, isn't it? Uh, you, there's actually the founder of Climany <laughs> <laughs> there, so you can, no, no but you can, if you want to explain it, you can actually. Um, obviously, it's a good question. Um, I think on the one hand, um, we have yet not reached an, any point of space in which the total awareness in society has reached any point in which we can say, okay, now everyone is actually educated. So we believe for ourselves that we actually have a different approach to bringing this product and to the market. 
So um, also reaching consumers in a different way and also having a, our own approach to education. So um, it's a general question and um, totally get your point that why do something over and over again. But on the other hand, um, in our market, in our, the way our markets work, uh, competition is a good thing because it actually drives the best ideas to succeed and um, will eliminate the ones that do not succeed um, on the way. So ensuring that the best ideas will come through, I believe um, that with Climate we can actually su uh, help succeeding here. Um, and yes, obviously a lot of things about market economics that we can discuss, but um, <laughs> yeah. If I'm only allowed for one follow-up question, so what is it that you do better than the competitors? So, um, uh, like most competitors that you actually look in the, let's say, CO2 education space, um, don't really provide any actual education, like background knowledge on, um, if you look, if you look into the App Store and you look for any like CO2 application, you find like some with like super generic tips and uh, then, I don't know, some that even lead you into consuming products and services, etc. cetera. So um, what we do is, for example, we partner up with the different, like we are basically building an open platform in which different partners can participate with their knowledge and their approach. And um, we make this a rather open, um, approach and not only like that we are on the stage gate to what information is show, shown in the application. Uh, ah, yeah, I think um, the, it was a bit too loud. Thank you. Um, and uh, next up, um, I think, yes, obviously uh, we have a unique brand and m that we built around our product, which is able to, to reach different kind of people than existing services. Hope this answers your question. Thank you. Fascinating. Following questions to this or anything else? <laughs> um, why would you focus on the carbon footprint of consumers instead of big tech or companies in general? Like the individual or their carbon footprint doesn't really matter in the big picture, does it? It's a question again to you. <laughs> um, uh, could, could, could you please for, um, uh, for once repeat your question? I wasn't aware that you were talking to me. Uh, um, he asked on, on why we're focusing on the reduction of consumers and not the corporate um, I, I think um, on all levels of society we have to reduce carbon emissions and uh, the one that, that we can influence most at the moment and in our own lives is the ones that um, is, is the life that we control. Um, I do not at all say that we should not um, help or demand from corporations to reduce their CO2 emissions themselves and I guess most of us are also employees. So we have a voice at our own workplace. We can also educate about that. What, um, and I think, yes, obviously, we need to start somewhere. And um, I think in any way, every ton of CO2 that can be avoided or reduced is a meaningful contribution. Um, I'm not saying we should be doing the either or the other. I'm just saying that w the one that approach that we are taking is the one that focuses on individuals, on private households. Not at all to say that we do not want any actions to be seen in the in the corporate space, but um, uh, obviously if you have a, range, a variety of options that you can do and where you can invest your time and your money. And um, we, with our partner uh, or our partner companies, um, chose that to follow that path. Not at all saying that the other ones aren't necessary or not even even more needed. Yeah. And maybe also important that um, Climany is an example of one of the ventures we build in this space, which happens to be a B2C focused venture because um, our parent company asks to us to operate in this space. So um, generally in building digital business models, um, we also focusing on helping corporates reduce their CO2 footprint. So we see this overall importance. Further questions? Mm. 
Yeah, I just have a question. Um, do you see an increase in the interest? So you, you were telling that you are looking into the stakeholders, actually the companies uh, you're working for, if uh, sustainability is relevant for them, right? So this is, this is your starting point. Um, I don't know, how, how long are you operating already? Do you see an increase, meanwhile, something which indicates that it does matter? Mm -hmm. um, so we also um, historically seen our company was focusing on this deep tech IoT um, sphere. So it's only since like one or two years we have this transition to focus in the sustainability sphere. And so what we are seeing is an overall interest of companies to operate in this um, to become more sustainable. For example, you can go to every page of a Mittelstand company and there you see a header section, sustainability, climate awareness, so everyone is theoretically open, but mo not many people operate, do actually anything. So it's like, at the moment, it's more of an idea what you could theoretically do, and therefore, we're often doing like research sprints, uh, we're often doing this idea validation part, but like actual sustainable products that are built or actual um, requests for building sustainable products are a few at the moment, but it's growing, hopefully. Further questions? If not, I have a question, if I may. Yeah. So, um, you said you're always l trying not to get into this uh, pit of greenwashing and sustainability is very easy to be for because we don't know what sustainability is so each company can say we're sustainable we're striving striving for sustainability but uh, it's not defined there's a thousand definitions of what's included so when measuring the impact what are your criteria or what um, academic or practical foundations are you building it on because um, it means a lot of different things to different people companies regions countries and so on yeah, so, so there's like no standard framework we're using at the moment. And um, therefore, we have first also a look at the company. Um, so we made like this kind of background check um, if this company actually is willing to make this transition in the sustainability sphere. And it's not like, I don't want to throw shade on any company, but it's not like an oil rig company that wants to have like one small sustainable digital idea offering. And therefore, it really depends on case by case. Um, we try not to focus on CO2 equivalents only since it's like not an overall or intersectional approach, but um, kind of. Um, let's say, for example, uh, check if it's um, an alignment with the SDGs. And so there's really like no hard framework we're using there, but it depends really on case by case um, as an answer. Um, also, if I may add just uh, to that question, um, I think what we can, what we always do, and this is card, part of the idea validation, is to talking to industry or uh, knowledge experts in that sphere. So um, when talking, um, when thinking of how to validate a concept, an idea, then we could try to get multiple perspectives on that idea to see, okay, who and what thinks of uh, this in which way it tells of, of, of what additional things to take into consideration so that we get, come to a broad and holistic perspective. Okay, um, I get the point and I find it very um, valuable to see this sector definitely have other perspectives that needs to be taken into account. However, sustainability is only recently taking social perspectives into account or uh, social accountability for uh, products where it's uh, produced whatsoever. Same goes for software. Like I haven't heard, uh, not criticizing anyone here, just saying uh, social justice in programming is not very big at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so how to take resources, water, biodiversity, um, there's no framework, I know, but uh, I just want to be a bit critical of the idea saying it's so easy to, to name something sustainable, but there's no... It's still in the making and it's still dis discussionable, yeah. so how can, how can it become like even 
better in the future? Like, what can you build this on when you are uh, counseling or creating products for other companies? Mm -hmm. um, so here I also have to say that at the moment we're from the this classical ESG, we're currently operating into the in the E part, uh, focusing on ecological ecological um, sphere. So we're totally aware that there are also social issues. So at the moment um, we're focusing there and trying to expand more into the future. Also take other factors into the consideration. And then uh, could you repeat the question? Or no, do you see any uh, possibilities of creating a framework? Of course, it, it cannot be static, it has to be dynamic, it has to be a learning dynamic framework that, and criteria that you can use, but um, are you already seeing some, do you have, have you gained some learnings to see where this could be heading in the future based on the couple of products you have been inventing or creating for companies? Uh, good question. Maybe if you have... Um, so, so I think f uh, may maybe first of all, uh, also to uh, to the whole room, um, I, I think the point you're mentioning is, is uh, a very known problem, right? That you can stick a sustainable label on something because you consider it from one like um, aspect, right? And maybe just in terms of how much energy efficient it is, but it doesn't take into uh, into account what other topics along the value chain it, it touches and where um, also like maybe specific um, like, like just other topics come into consideration that maybe or are influenced that are not taken into consideration. In terms of how to move forward to um, build a framework um, to take this into consideration, I think there are great um, already assessments out there. For example, like when we work, um, I mean in German it's now called the Lieferketten Sorgfalts Pflichtgesetz. I think at that point um, we as Watex benefit a lot from our cooperation with, with FISMAN because they evaluate every of their suppliers with a huge questionnaire of like, I don't know, 200 or 300 different questions regarding touching all these different aspects. So I think there are a lot of approaches to this. I'm not saying they're perfect or they're, they're finalized yet. But I think um, it is a policy in that sense that also driving more and more the necessity to define one standard of how to define things, how, when to label them, in which way. So um, what we can only do, we can, or what we try is we try to stay open and try to learn a lot from the input that we're getting through different people that we're approaching when we're talking to these, about these kind of topics. Conferences like these are also great because then we get different perspectives again. And, um, but I think lastly, it, it has to come down to, um, to one regulation approach in which we get defined when we can call something sustainable or whatnot. Thank you. Any last remarks? Thank you very Thanks much so for much. taking the time. Thank you for contributing. Uh, enjoy the evening, the last of Bits and Bäume, and don't forget the uh, ending conference is then in Ahon.